tell you what, there's so much going on spiritually. I tell people to pay attention, behave. I didn't. So if you see me leaning a little bit today, be careful what you're doing your laundry. <laughs> <laughs> doing something so simple, I came up out of the laundry basket, was bent straight over instead of bending my knees and turned. Tore that right there. That feels really good right now, so don't mind me. I'm leaning a little bit. Um, and it'll be just fine. When God says slow down, He means it. I didn't think morning was a big issue, but obviously it was yesterday. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Remember something, when we blow these shofars, a lot of ministries don't even believe in it. The walls of Jericho came down. They not only came down, if you study that, they were pushed down into the ground. They didn't even have to walk over a rock. It was made level. Those walls, they have an estimate maybe 30, 40 feet thick, so high, you would need a nuclear bomb to knock those things down. They marched for seven days, blew the shofars, and the walls, not only, they didn't fall over, they went down into the ground. Wow. So when God moves something out of your way, you don't have to climb over it, it's gone. That's right. And the reason most people do so much climbing is because they're not open to change. There's no fear in change. You're going to find that out today. And if you're not willing to be changed, you will not walk with God. You will not serve God. I've been stressing lately the importance of obedience and humbleness before our King. It's everything. Right now, you need Jesus more than you ever do. If you think you can leave here today and go do it by yourself, God, luck, God bless you. And when you come back and they wheel you in here, we will pray for you. Because let me tell you something. He didn't create us to be these mighty warriors. What He created us was to be weak vessels so His mighty strength could live through us and in us. It is not through your strength you're going to accomplish anything because it will never bring glory to God. Don't do things apart from God because if you do, the only thing you're doing is patting yourself on the back and you want people to acknowledge you and not the one who died and rose Amen. again. Amen. So we blow these shofars. We're announcing to the heavens and the earth all the powers of darkness, but what we're acknowledging to the powers of darkness is our God reigns. Yeah. And not Him. He's the King of nothing. See? He belongs nowhere but where He's going, an eternal lake of fire. When we blow these, we signify to heaven, we acknowledge our God reigns, and no darkness is welcome here. Because God flattens every mountain that's in your way. He says so. We've taught on that enough. So when we blow these shofars, the significance spiritually is you're acknowledging the one who came and who died and who rose again. When who rules and reigns this whole universe and everything in it, he is supreme. Amen? Amen. <laughs> When we do that, we've acknowledged there's only one. That's what you've done. You've acknowledged Him and His greatness, His awesomeness. We could come up with a million words right now and it doesn't describe our God. There are no human words to paint a picture of Him. He's above all that. He is above everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we come before You. This new day that you have created, that we rejoice in it in all things and be glad in it. For your compassions fail not, they may new every morning, O oh God. <coughs> Father, we give this whole service into the hands of the Holy Spirit. But Lord, not just here at this ministry, but in every church around the earth right now, arise in it, O oh God. Bring a fresh fire and a fresh anointing, O oh God. Bring the body of Christ back together as a family of one, O oh God. 
It's one church, many locations, Lord Jesus. Tear down the spirit of religion, denominationalism, and everything else that brings division to your children. Lord, you broke down all enmity at the cross between the Jew and the Gentile and between all human beings, Lord God. Show everybody that we're to be a family of one today, Father. And Lord, I thank you for bringing America to its knees. That we finally repent of our sinful ways here, O oh God. And we turn back to a holy God and you'll restore the land to keep us as one nation under God. Because without you, we are no nation, Lord Jesus. You came to redeem us, O oh God. Bring your power to Washington all through the government. Then, Lord, you show them that you rule and reign. We've mocked you. We've dishonored you as a country, O oh God. But we thank you that you are forever merciful, loving, kind, and forgiving. Restore us to oneness and right relationship with you today, Father. In the holy and the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for another awesome day as we come before your throne. I come before you boldly, O oh God, knowing, Father, what your Son did for me at the cross. He tore the veil. So we can all enter into your presence, Father. Pour yourself in here today, Lord Jesus. Arise in here today, Lord Jesus. And touch us and make us more like you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Mm. God is so good. Amen. Amen. All the time. Wow. Amazing, you start praising God, how much better you feel. How about that? I couldn't even walk this I couldn't even barely walk this morning. I couldn't barely I couldn't even I had to squat down and bend slowly just to tie my shoes. That's how much pain was in my side. You come in here, you worship Jesus. You praise Jesus. You come to a holy place before Jesus who was so holy, and you say, God, have mercy. You know what he does? He heals. He restores. He mends. He makes it all better. This, I, I was going to stay home yesterday anyway, but I really stayed home all day yesterday. <laughs> Even the few little things I was going to do, I was going to do, did not get done. So I stayed home and studied. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have information cards in the back. If you haven't given me up-to-date information, because Jennifer's going to redo the list. I have a bunch of cards with me. We're redoing because we keep everybody's emails, addresses, your up-to-date phone numbers, whatever you got. Birthday. Please make sure you fill out a card and put it in that can back there. And we give everything to Jennifer today. She can redo that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Went to potluck next week? Yes. Next week. Woo! Now, next week, I preach a family of one. I have for 22 years, and I will do it until I go home. Next Sunday is potluck. What we're going to do is I'm going to do a little thing about the fu function of the church. Too many ministries, too many people sit in the chairs and they do nothing else. You won't do that here. God doesn't want you doing it and I don't want you doing it. And if I allow you to do it, then it's my fault. Remember something, I was an evangelist. When God said be a pastor, me and him had a year-long wrestling match. <laughs> because that's always where I wanted to be was out there. He said, no, you raise up evangelists in here. And then send them out. Down the road, you can come back to doing that. But right now, no. So right now, he's building this house, so this is my responsibility. When I leave here, believe me, I go right back into my evangelistic mode, okay? But your job is to take what you get fed with here, and you're to take it out to this world. Because if you've watched TV at all, you've listened to the news at all, there's only one hope. Jesus Christ. And if you're not telling them, then they're going to keep... They're going to go to mystics, they're going to go to Sison, they're going to go to Buddhism, they're going to go to this ism and that ism and every other ism that's out there. And none of them are going to get them to eternal glory in Jesus Christ. The problem people are getting saved is because the body of Christ is not out there proclaiming the holy name of Jesus. Like even the other day I was listening to something, I actually listened to Joel Osteen, a little thing on the, on a, turned on the computer, I saw his face, I listened, he said something that was very crucial. First he said your prayers aren't big enough. I agreed with that 100%. You people, your prayers are too small, by the way. They're too small. you got a guy to make the universe. He says, call upon my name and I'll answer. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Remember something, you need to start expanding your prayer life a little bit. Don't ask for Grump to be saved. Oh, really? One little town, 37,000 people, please. Pray the whole world gets saved. Because that's the Father's heart. That's why He sent His Son. You need to make your prayers so big, so unimaginable, because we serve a God that's bigger than those. That's right. We got all the small thinking in here, and it needs to change. That's why we're going to talk about change today. How about that? You need.
need to focus on Jesus. I'm, I'm sharing this with you because in my heart this week when he said change, you're, a lot of you are trying to be changed by God and you're trying to figure out how to do it. There we go. Didn't work, did it? If you could change yourself, Jesus Christ doesn't have to go to the cross. Think about what I'm saying. If you could change yourself, you could save yourself, protect yourself, all that other stuff. If you could do that, He doesn't go to the cross because you could do something during your way into eternal glory. And you can't. Nobody can in here. Because you got nothing to justify yourself before a holy throne of God. Only the redeeming power of the blood of the cross can do that. You can't even enter in without Him tearing the veil. When you go back, we're going to have communion today. This is something so holy that we're doing. And we have a real blessing today, the way we're going to do communion. It's something that the Lord did at the, at the Last Supper, and that's what we're going to do today. It's going to be so powerful. When I heard about what somebody was going to do for us and bless us with today, it really just touched my heart in a big way. But remember something, it's so important that you humble yourselves this day. Stop trying to be somebody you weren't created to be and allow God to make changes in you because the changes He's going to make in you, all of you, not some of you, all of us need to be changed day to day. If you want to go glory to glory, you will allow God to have sovereignty over you every step you take. That's right. Well, you can do it your way, and your way, well, Burger King's down the strip. <laughs> Friday night Bible. Friday night is worship night. It's fellowship night, but it's worship night. You come here seeking Jesus. And I want everybody to let the girls have this place till about 20 to 7 or so. Okay, because when they come in, we open up with prayer. They got to practice. They go through their songs and then they start singing. So don't get here till at least 6.30, quarter to 7. Give them time to practice. Because that's the time they come together as one. And they go over their songs and then they practice them. Coming in after that is fine, but give them some time to breathe because what they do is, is, is something holy. It's to God. Give them some time. I'll be here till midnight with you if you really need to. We're going to have a ministry that goes around the clock anyway, so that's not an issue. See, even Robert knows that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That young boy. You talk about what I preach, the power of prayer. We're at Bible study, had a great time Wednesday night. We're all worshiping. I always preach the power of unity and oneness. That little boy's got such an anointing, we dedicated him here. David gets a phone call, Mike gets home. They're flying him to Las Vegas, he landed on his head. There were about ten of us left. We stood right here and prayed. By ten o'clock he called me as we prayed. All his vitals went back to normal. Thank you. Don't tell me God doesn't hear our prayers and the cry of our hearts. We went right back to Jesus in prayer as a family. We prayed for that baby. And two hours later, that young man was on his way home. Back to his house where he belonged. So don't say God doesn't heal. God doesn't restore. Immediately. Read the book of Mark. He healed immediately. Immediately. When they came together and they prayed, they believed. We believed. And that baby's so full of life. Look at him. Isn't that awesome? That's what a family of God's supposed to do. You come together, you pray for your family, and then you watch God answer prayers. The doctors were in a tizzy, but God, when I got this. And you know what's amazing? We held hands, we kept praying and praying and praying until we got a release in the Spirit. We all looked at each other and went, baby, you'll be fine, and out the door we went. We didn't have another concern from there. Because God, as soon as we got a release in the Holy Spirit, we knew that baby was fine. Like I said, two hours later, 10 o'clock, I'm on the phone with Brother Mike back there. And he goes, yeah, they're on the way home. He's fine. He's laughing. He's singing. He's ready to go. Huh, Robert? Jesus. Yeah. He knows it. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so faithful. Oh, thank you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, God. Mm. He's so good. You look at children, they're so innocent. And then you see God touch that baby. I'm sure those doctors got touched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they, they're worrying about how to fix him, and we didn't have to worry because we had the one that made him fix him. Yeah. Remember what happened here Wednesday night, ladies and gentlemen. 
remember what God did. Because we believed. We, we've had too many miracles in this ministry for you not to believe what God will do. And if He does it for that baby, how much more will He do for all of you? <clears throat> Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Communion today is so powerful because I'll tell you what. When the Lord was at the supper table, they brought the, He took the bread out. He lifted it up to the Father and He broke it. And then handed it around for them to eat. Now before we lift this bread up in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, He turned me to this last night late. He said, read this for communion so they know what they're putting in their body. Isaiah 7, verses 10 to 14. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Everybody knows that means God with us. So when we lift this bread up to heaven today and we break it, that's the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Emmanuel. God with us. So when you partake of communion today, you make sure your hearts are clean. You make sure you have no bitterness. No unforgiveness, no judgmentalism, that your heart is pure before your God. If not, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you so you can take accountability. You don't have to come up. It's not a big ritual. God's going to hear you from your heart. He won't hear you from your lips because what comes off your lips a lot of times is not from God. Huh? How about that? <laughs> yeah, amen. But it's so serious where we are right now. What we're doing right now is so holy. When they said they were bringing bread, I was so blessed because that's what the Lord did. He broke it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to break this bread before the Lord thy God. And then they're going to hand it out and you're going to take a piece of this bread. We're going to do it just the way Jesus did it. Remember something. He's our role model. He's our example to live by, to walk in His ways. But you're putting a man you love on you today. When you take of this, think of His broken body. Emmanuel. That's what we're partaking of today. Oh, in Jesus' name. <laughs> and fathers, we lift this bread up to you in the holy and the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, mighty God, how could you love us the way you do? All of humanity, Lord God. <laughs> We so turned away from the ways of God in this world, Lord Jesus. But Lord, we lift this bread up to you right now. Your body, O oh God. Knowing that we partake of your body, we partake of your healing power of your name. We take of the broken body on the cross because those stripes on your broken body what brings us healing. So Lord, as I break this bread before you, let us always put the broken body of Christ before our eyes so that we know what it took to redeem us, O oh God. So, Father, as I break this bread and we hand it out, we celebrate what your Son did for us, Father, in the holy and the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 in this out right now, you meditate on Jesus. You meditate on that cross. Because what this broken bread represents is a broken body. The Son of God. Who freely did this for us. Who freely allowed His body to be beaten and broken, nailed to a cross, so we could be healed and made whole and restored. We talked about being made whole on Wednesday night. Do you really want to be made whole? 
So as you bow your heads right now before you put the broken body of Jesus in, you make sure you've surrendered your heart and that it is clean before God right now. We have no right to judge, nor be unforgiving, nor fault-finding, nor anything else before a holy God. We have no right to. And if you ask God to reveal what's in your heart right now, He will. You ask Him to forgive you for it, and He will cleanse it. just and pure and true and righteous, oh God. Oh Lord Jesus, come. And Father, as we partake of this broken body, love it. let us never, never, never forget that this is Emmanuel. God with us, who freely gave up heaven to come walk in human flesh, to die on that cross and rise on the third day. Let us never forget that this bread that was broken in Calvary, that was celebrated at the Last Supper before he went to the cross, oh God, what a symbol this is. What an eternal symbol this is, oh God, for you are the eternal God. So as we partake of the bread right now, Father, Sink this into our hearts this day in Jesus' name. This cup of the new covenant, the blood covenant. Lord, a government, a covenant can't even be in effect until the one that made the testament, that new covenant, has to give up their life for it. You sealed us with your blood and Holy Spirit, O oh God. We are washed, we are cleansed, we are pure as the new driven snow. Because everyone in here has confessed their sins to you, O oh God. Their hearts have been purified this day. Their sins are washed away with the blood of Jesus. Let everybody see in here that they're dressed with a robe of righteousness and a garment of salvation. We are clothed with you, Lord Jesus. And we got that privilege when you died. When you said it is finished and you shed your blood on the cross. Oh, Lord. Give us thankful hearts. Grateful hearts to you, O oh God, for what you've done for us. We've done nothing to earn this cup, O oh God. Father, only your Son paid the price. The eternal price for our eternal glory. We praise you. We bless you, Father. And Lord, let us never even forget it for a minute what you have done for us. In Jesus' mighty name. I had that cup up there. He showed me so many people go to church, they have communion one Sunday a month, and by the time they leave, they've forgotten the blood. I got a whole picture of it. Of people walking out of churches and forgetting what he freely gave up for us. I get everything in a picture. We've done nothing to earn the cup of the new covenant. There isn't anything any of us can do. So when you think about Jesus today, you think about this cup and don't ever forget it. Leave those cups on the table in the back. If you want to take one home just as a remembrance today, I think you should. I'm going to leave that right there. Because we have something 
that no one else has in all these other belief systems. We have a living God. His flesh died on that cross. God has been eternal. He lives forevermore. He was alive before the world began. He's been alive up till now. And He's going to live forevermore. His flesh died on the cross, but not God. You can't kill God. Sin and death couldn't hold God. Remember what the cup represents today because it's so important and when you do that, you won't be afraid of change. Amen? Amen. Too many of you are walking in fear because God's been um, testing you. I'm going to put that nicely. We'll get to that in a minute. Now when we sing today, think about what we just partook of. Emmanuel, God is with us. God came to earth. Think about when you're singing, who you're singing to, who loves you above the one sitting next to you. Like I said, I love my wife, but what is that next to God's love for her, please, really? <laughs> his love for us. My love for her doesn't compare to His love for her. And neither do any of you. You think you love your wife, your children, the grandkids? What is that next to His love for them? See, and if you don't trust His love for them, then you don't trust Him. That's why so many people run around trying to fix their families, fix their friends, and fix everything else, because they don't trust God and His love for us to take care of it. Remember something? You can't change yourselves. Never mind fixing someone else. Now stop in the name of Jesus. Oh, you would never do that, Michelle. <laughs> so when you worship today, Worship Emmanuel. He came for us. Worship the one who came to redeem you today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.